The Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness that may even be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Then Pharaoh called to Moses and said, Go, serve the Lord, only let your flocks and your herds be kept back. Let your little ones also go with you. But Moses said, You must also give us sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our livestock also shall go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind, for we must take some of them to serve the Lord our God. And even we do not know with what we must serve the Lord until we arrive there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. Then Pharaoh said to him, Get away from me. Take heed to yourself, and see my face no more. For in the day that you see my face, you shall die. So Moses said, You have spoken well. I will never see your face again. And the Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. Afterward he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will surely drive you out from here altogether. Speak now in the hearing of the people, and let every man ask from his neighbour, and every woman from her neighbour, articles of silver and articles of gold. And the Lord gave the people favour in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. Then Moses said, Thus says the Lord, About midnight I will go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the female servant who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the animals. Then there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as was not like it before, nor shall be like it again. But against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move its tongue, against man or beast, that you may know that the Lord does make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And all these your servants shall come down to me and bow down to me, saying, Get out, and all the people who follow you. After that I will go out. Then he went out from Pharaoh in great anger. But the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not heed you, so that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. So Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the children of Israel go out of his land. My name's Arthur. Thank you for joining me as we've read together the end of chapter 10 and chapter 11 of Exodus. The children of Israel have been 200 years in Egypt, and for half of that time they have been enslaved by the Egyptians, considered a lower class of people. They have persisted in acknowledging God, although their knowledge and experience of God was not strong. And the Egyptians made them work with forced labour. So they cried out to the Lord, and the Lord had acknowledged them as his people because of the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And he had raised up Moses and skilled him and trained him, first with forty years as a prince in Egypt, and then forty years as a shepherd in the wilderness, and then called him to go to Pharaoh and demand that Pharaoh let the children of Israel come three days' journey into the wilderness to worship the Lord. But because of Pharaoh's attitude to the God of heaven, he saw himself as a son of the gods, but the Israelites were of no account. So he did not acknowledge their right to worship God. And so the Lord has revealed his power to Pharaoh, for Pharaoh said, I do not know the Lord. But now he has seen the Lord's hand at work in judgments against Egypt. And he knows it's the Lord, for because Moses, speaking in the Lord's name, has named the event the day before it happens. And it is in response to Moses' prayer that the judgment passes.
And Pharaoh has learned that he must ask Moses to pray for him for a judgment to leave. Nevertheless, he has persisted in resisting. And now when Moses says, we all must go, he has declared, you will not see my face again. The Lord had prepared Moses beforehand for this response. And so Moses announces to Pharaoh the final judgment. And this is that on one night, about midnight, the Lord will go through the midst of Egypt and kill the firstborn in every family of man and livestock, whether it's Pharaoh or his maidservant behind the mill. Would not matter on the status of the person the firstborn would die. But this will only apply to the Egyptians. God will make a distinction. God makes a difference between the Egyptians and the Israelites. And we'll find out in the next chapter what this difference is, because the word difference actually refers to a ransom. The children of Israel will obey God and offer a sacrifice. The Egyptians will spurn God and offer no sacrifice. And that is the difference. One humbles themselves before God. But Pharaoh refuses to humble himself before God. He continues to resist the Lord. James urges us to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may lift us up to resist the devil, rather than to resist God. And Moses declares to Pharaoh that his servants, his advisers, will come down to him, He will not see Pharaoh's face again, but his representatives will come to Moses saying, get out and all the people who follow you. And so we will leave. And having made that announcement, Moses goes out from Pharaoh's presence in great anger. Why was he angry? He was angry because Pharaoh was so stubborn. He had negotiated with Pharaoh and made this request to him And Pharaoh had consistently said no. He had consistently lied. He had on three occasions said, I have sinned, but he had not repented. Moses had prayed for Pharaoh. Moses had prayed for the relief of these judgments. And still, Pharaoh had not humbled himself before the Lord. And the Lord encourages Moses by saying, Yes, Pharaoh will not heed you so that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt, so that we might understand that all those things that happen in the world happen under the mighty hand of God. And while we cannot understand why particular things happen, we learn that the response that we should make to these things is that we must pray. We must pray for our communities. We must pray for our societies. We must pray for those who do not know God and do not pray themselves. For all these things are under the mighty hand of God. Now this process had led to Moses gaining a great reputation, not only before the Israelites, but before the people. And it has also raised the profile of the people. These people were no longer just seen as slaves, they were seen as the people of God. And so one of the instructions that God had given Moses way back at the burning bush, is now enacted. Speak in the hearing of the people and let every man ask from his neighbour and every woman from her neighbour articles of silver and articles of gold. The children of Israel did so. The Lord gave the people favour in the sight of the Egyptians and they gave them silver and gold. Why did they do that? Well, they were not going to risk further upsetting the God of heaven. The whole society and nation had experienced these things and they understood that God had spoken through Moses. And so if God had spoken through Moses and asking that the children of Israel ask for articles of silver and gold, they were not going to fight against the God of heaven and resist. And so they brought their articles of silver and gold and clothing And in this way, the children of Israel plundered the Egyptians, not forcefully taking, but the Egyptians freely giving what was asked. And so, Moses and Pharaoh will not meet again. How will the Lord make this final distinction between the children of Israel 
and the egyptians.